the imaging findings of right lower lobe collapse. Here is a normal PA and lateral chest radiograph. Here's the aortic knuckle, here's the pulmonary trunk, there's the left main pulmonary artery, there's the right main pulmonary artery. The left atrial appendage isn't seen on this study, but is in this vicinity. Here is the left ventricle, the left atrium is posterior, the right atrium forms the right heart border. The diaphragm is formed because the interface of the diaphragm denotes the interface between the aerated lung and the solid organs below. Note that you don't see the uh, diaphragm where the heart sits on it. It just comes into view here on the left side. On the lateral view, the important thing to note is that in normal patients, the density of the spine reduces as you go from top to bottom. This is because there is more lung to go through before hitting the cassette plate. On the PA radiograph, the right lower lobe occupies a significant area on the PA two-dimensional film. The lateral film sometimes shows the oblique fissure, which runs from about T4 to the anterior corner of the chest. And in a right lower lobe collapse, the collapse occurs towards the mediastinum and towards the posterior chest wall. Here is an early right lower lobe collapse. You've lost the interface just here, it's a bit fuzzy, and then it's well defined, and that's because as the X-ray beam hits the interface, it is tangential to that interface, and therefore it's sharp. Here, it's not so tangential, and it may be oblique to the beam, and therefore you don't see the interface. Don't forget that each chest radiograph has different uh, variations in anatomy, and you may see the entire interface, or you may see a partial interface. Now, the reason why you see the right uh, hemidiaphragm is because there is hyperexpansion of the right middle lobe, which then abuts the diaphragm, enabling it to be seen as the X-ray beam hits the interface between the diaphragm and the right middle lobe tangentially. Note that there is some volume loss in this patient with a right lower lobe collapse. And the right hilum is not seen very well. And this is because it is displaced downwards because of the collapse. On the lateral view, normally the density reduces as you go from the top of the spine down to the bottom of the spine. So it goes from white to black. But then it becomes white again because the right lower lobe collapses towards the posterior chest wall. Note that you don't often see the interface as a sharp margin because of the direction of the X-ray beam with respect to the collapsed lobe. And so the right lower lobe collapses towards the midline. You get shift of the hilum downwards and behind the heart. And there's an increase in density at this level here, where it should be a decrease in density. Here is another example of a right lower lobe collapse. You see a bit more of the interface higher up, but then it fades. Again, this is a partial right lower lobe collapse. So in other words, it's an early collapse. Later on, when the collapse becomes more profound, the interface will be seen closer to the heart border and closer towards the midline. Again, the lateral film on this same patient shows a gradual reduction in density, but then that density increases again where you've got the right lower lobe collapse. Note also that the diaphragm is seen because the interface is tangential to the X-ray beam, but at this point, you've now got the diaphragm abutting the same density, which is the right lower lobe collapse, so you don't see it. 
Note that on the PA film, the reason why you see the right hemidiaphragm is because this part of the diaphragm is tangential to the X-ray beam and sits below a rated right middle lobe. So here's the diaphragm which can be seen because the dome of the diaphragm is abutting a rated lung. This particular patient doesn't have any shift of the right hilum and you don't always see that until very late on in the collapse. Here is a complete right lower lobe collapse. You can see this increased density behind the right side of the heart. You can see a separate interface and the interface is clearly seen almost up to the hilum because of a uh, complete collapse here. Note also that the right hilum descends and tucks behind the heart and you get overall volume loss. One other secondary sign of lobar collapse is that you get hyperexpansion of the right upper lobe and middle lobe and as a result the blood vessels are forced further apart and this uh, gives the impression of a reduction in number of vessels per unit area. Here is another example of a right lower lobe collapse. Here is the interface of the collapsed right lower lobe and just here is the right heart border formed by the right atrium. Note that the right hilum has been pulled down and is difficult to see because it's been tucked inside the heart shadow.